All right, so when you think about martial arts, you don't think about the respect and the dedication that the martial artists put into the sport. You don't think about the forms and their proper technique and the beauty. What you think about is the guy on YouTube who broke six bricks with his forehead. Or you think about the person who jumps up and does a scissor kick and, hit and destroys two boards at the same time with pieces going everywhere. So today I'm going to show all of you how to break a board. Okay? So I'm going to go over first how to use proper technique on a target pad for practice. Then I'm going to show you how to set up your board hold holders so that everyone is safe. And lastly, I'm going to talk about the three different kinds of boards and the uniqueness for each break. All right, so first, the technique, the most important part. <laughs> if you have someone holding a target pad, that's what this is. It makes a really loud noise. All right, they put the strap on so that if I hit it really hard, it's not going to go flying out of his hand. Holds it like this with both hands. Alright. <laughs> I'm gonna hit you, I promise. So what you don't realize about Taekwondo is that there's a science, there's an actual scientific equation for breaking a board. It is mass times acceleration equals force. Now if you think about it, it makes lots of sense. If you don't put power behind the technique, the board's not gonna break. If you don't put speed behind the technique, it's not gonna break. So if you combine the two, it breaks. So I'm gonna show you how to break with a palm heel. You aim with one hand. Notice how my body is to the side. I lift my leg up to add force and speed, and I hit it, all right? That is the proper technique for that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not just about the proper technique and the scientific equation, it's also about the mind. If you believe that you cannot break a board, you won't break that board. You could be the strongest person in the world and that board will still not break. You go up to it and you're like, oh, I guess I'm gonna do this. It might not break, it might break, I don't know, we'll see. Your, your board will not break. I've seen it a hundred times with kids. They go up, they're hesitant, they don't know if they can do it, and then they don't do it, and then they're sad and they cry. You gotta get your mind in the right spot. So, the second thing I'm gonna talk about is how to have your board holders hold the board correctly. Because if they don't hold it correctly, you won't break your board and everyone gets hurt. <laughs> so the first thing, the most important part about this is how they put their legs, okay? So if I'm doing a palm heel strike, so they're going to make a tricycle with their legs. So these back ones here are going to go like this in the back together. You have to touch feet. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, the entire foot, the side of your foot. There you go. And then the front foot is going to come up here. Yeah. Okay. So. So you have to make sure that their legs are bent, all right, that, that those back two feet are touching, and they're also making like a tricycle with their feet. Second, the holding the board, okay? So they're going to hold it off to the side. Your top hands, they need to cross, all right? That's very important because if I break this board and their top hands aren't crossing, the board is going to hit them in the face, okay? And it's <laughs> going to work. <laughs> okay, so you're going to cross here, you're going to cross here like this, okay? Make sure that their thumbs aren't on top either, because if the board moves out to the side, it will hit their thumbs and that will also hurt, okay? Their arms have to be locked. Straight arms. Straight. There you go. And, most important part, they cannot be looking when I break the board. Because <laughs> if, if they are looking, they will flinch automatically. It's a nervous reaction, and if they flinch, I'm more likely to unbreak the board. So, you're going to turn your heads facing that way. Do not watch me. <laughs> Close your eyes if you have to. Ready? Just like that. Okay? See? And were you hurt? No. Mine the one who's hurt. My hand hurts. Okay? <laughs> so, that is how you set up your board holders so that they don't hurt themselves, and you don't hurt yourself except when the board goes through your hand. Okay? Lastly, I'm going to talk about the three types of boards and the uniqueness of them. The most common one, which you've probably seen on YouTube and all over the internet, is the wooden board. The wooden board is actually the easiest to break because if you break the board along the seam, it will break anywhere on the board, which is great if you have really bad aim. Uh, <laughs> the only time wooden boards are hard to break is when there is there, they've been sitting somewhere so long they're almost petrified or there's a knot in the board. Then you could be the strongest person and that board will not break. And it's not your fault. It's because that knot 
is made, has made it petrified. And that, that was, those wooden boards, when they are petrified, you cannot break them, all right? The hardest thing to break is a piece of paper because power, power does not, is not a factor into this. This is when your technique is important. Just hold it like this, study again. And then just do this with your legs, like I had to do with that, okay? I could power through this, and it broke because he was holding it really tight, but it didn't break down the middle, okay? So hold it one more time. Now, if I add snap to my technique, it breaks right down the middle. And it's really hard. We usually use it as a teaching tool because if they can break the paper, then that means their technique is correct. Okay, and the last is the rebreakable. It is the hardest to break because if you don't break on the line, the board doesn't break. And then the darker the board color is, the harder it is to break. In my last speech, I told you that this is the equivalent to a man's skull. The blackboard is the equivalent to the hardest bone in a person's body. So today, I went over the technique used on a target, uh, target and then I told you about the uh, the way to set up your board holders so that you don't get hurt and they don't get hurt. And lastly, I told you about the three different kinds of boards and their uniqueness. Now, if you do try this at home, I advise that you do it under supervision and exactly the way I taught you. <laughs> Otherwise, someone will get injured. Um, it is really easy to learn how to break a board, as you can tell, and I hope that one day with practice, you all can do the same. Thank you. She broke it, you guys like Okay, okay. what's your name? Amanda. 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 You know, wood is the easiest, then the next is the paper, and then it's the man's skull board. All right, Amanda, as a demonstration, I think that you did an excellent job. Let's face it, it's uh, a process that you're showing us. You kind of set up what the process is, why uh, we would be looking at it. Uh, you give us background information on what's necessary in order to do that. I appreciated that. And then you show us the process itself. And I think you do that with the uh, three examples that you've got. I like that you get your volunteers up. They did volunteer, right? You know? <laughs> you know? And, and uh, you utilize them pretty well in the presentation. You're speaking the whole time. There's not any hesitation. You have very fluid transitions between the points. So uh, your energy level stays high the whole time you're speaking. I did think, for instance, the only time that you were turning away from the audience is when you had to do the demonstrations. Otherwise, you're trying to make contact with everybody, and I thought you did a really good job on that. Same thing with the body movements. I think this is a good example about how the body movements are being integrated into the speech and not just an example of being anxious or nervous. You know, it's, it's like, I gotta turn here, I gotta do this kind of thing, come back, let me tell you why this is going on, and then, you know, you kind of go back in the same sort of thing. So it's you you have the same kind of energy and and you know uh, desire to move that other people have but all of yours is channeled into what you're trying to do in the demonstration you have a little bit of a benefit because it is a physical act that you're demonstrating so you have a good way to channel that I, I wonder what it would be like if you were doing something else if you were giving a presentation on something that didn't involve that kind of physicality then you might have a little bit of an issue so you, you might be you help yourself a little bit here, but you also might be cheating yourself a little bit. And you may have to figure out how to deal with that in another context. Everything else is fine. It's like I have such minor quibbles, it's silly to even mention them, so I won't, because I'm not that silly. <laughs>